Come on, b- Come on b- bitch, let's bitch, go. Let's go. Guys, it's Thanksgiving week, gobble, gobble. So I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, which is I'm going to release a full free episode on my Deck Dish Dana YouTube channel under podcast tab and or on all listening platforms. So you guys can see one of my famous deep dives in full and in all its glory. Today, we're going to be doing Kris Jenner's love life in her early years from about, you know, 16 to about, you know, when she leaves Robert Kardashian for Bruce Jenner, aka Caitlyn Jenner now. So you're going to love this. You're going to get a lot of insight into the Kardashians, the dynamic between Kris Kardashian and her children, how this might have impacted the love lives of the Kardashian kids. A lot of things that you won't have heard of in this episode, I believe. I did not watch the Peacock special in doing this. I used several different books that were written by different investigative journalists, and including Kris Kardashian's old book, and also some media outlets that go way, way back from the time that you kind of need to know uh, some of the stories to find because they're sort of buried at this point. And you're going to see some really interesting crossovers become apparent with the Hiltons and some other people that you guys love from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I did try to bring that into this show because I know so many of my followers love reality TV and all things uh, Real Housewives. So I hope you enjoy it. I spent a lot of time on it. And happy Thanksgiving, you guys. At the end of this episode, I leave you a little happy Thanksgiving message. I hope you make it to the end. And if you do, get that message. Big kiss. Come on, bitch, 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 let's go. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive on sort of forgotten information about Kris Kardashian and the Kardashians. Why am I doing this? Because I feel like there's a lot of information people have forgotten and the Kardashians and keeping up with the Kardashians over the years has sort of rewritten the narrative of who Kris Kardashian and the rest of the family really is. And since we love to look into, you know, the rabbit holes on a lot of different true crime, people, reality, et cetera, to find the truth out, I thought I would do this topic in the podcast today because frankly, Kris Kardashian has so much to her that explains what we're seeing unfold today with the kids and everything else. Uh, Anyway, I was, you know, stumbling around in gossip land and I came upon some people discussing uh, a few old books that have been written by Jerry Oppenheimer and Kris Kardashian and some of the scandalous details that had been covered in them. And I thought to myself, I want to go back and read those books and the related articles, interviews that have happened with the people in the book because they were all really close friends to Kris Kardashian when she was coming up and the kids when they were small and Robert Kardashian and Bruce Jenner, et cetera, and or as he's known now as Caitlyn Jenner. So I was like, I can't really get to the bottom of the truth with the Kardashians without this base that I'm sort of missing because I'm seeing tabloid articles that really have moved on since then and it's almost like it didn't happen or exist and they can tell like a whole new image of themselves because at this point the Kardashians are so powerful They really can control what the media says about them in the narrative. So it occurred to me that everybody was so excited when I had done the many different dives on the Hilton family from B.B. Hilton's story all the way to the old Conrad days and then 
of course, big Kathy and you know Kim, Kathy and Kyle's upbringing, which kind of ties into the Kardashians too. There's some crossover there. So I'm watching this discussion, people rehashing in an old feed about some of the revelations that came out in these books, etc. And I'm shocked because Chris Kardashian, it turns out, really had no ethics in terms of her marriage and her dedication to her husband's ever. I thought this was really unusual because if you think about it, Courtney Kardashian, especially being the oldest, would have memories at this point in her life of her mother cheating on her father, Robert Kardashian, but not even in a dignified manner, you know, cheating with like a young playboy soccer guy, doing it a lot doing it in their family home, also in their friends' houses, making excuses to meet at the gym and uh, the cranes. You might remember the cranes. They showed up in keeping up with the Kardashians a little through their son, Todd Cranes, who's a big real estate agent in Beverly Hills. He works with the Altman Group, by the way. Uh, And, you know, so Todd Cranes' mom, Joyce, and... Dad, Larry Cranes, were huge socialites. I believe he was in manufacturing of rubber or something like that. And they were rich and they had huge soirees. And they would let Chris Kardashian come over and use the gym while Chris would use it as a way to hook up with a man that she was having an affair with, a Todd Waterman. And this has all come out and confirmed. And she did speak about it in her book, but not to the scandalous degree that comes out later when the Cranes are interviewed for a book in like 2017, I guess. They make a statement or in an article, I'm not sure, but it is them talking about how bad they felt that Robert Kardashian's heart had been broken by Chris Kardashian in these escapades that she was doing in his friend's houses, in his house, around town, etc. And so imagine that you are love your dad to death, Courtney Kardashian, you're older, and your mom and your dad are breaking up over your mom's infidelity that she's doing in a horrific way considering Beverly Hills standards. And with a complete disrespect for Robert Kardashian, whom, by the way, is the only reason she has any wealth, clout, or power at this time, because she is from a working class mother in California that ends up hanging out on golf courses and at Richie events, lands a pro golfer, then you know parlays that into a flight attendant position in first class, then parlays that into meeting Robert Kardashian. There's a few ways that people say they met. I'll get into that later. So she's not the one with the money or any of that. So it's like someone has given her this huge helping hand and the way she thanks them is to have an affair that is pretty open in the community about town. Now that's not to say Chris isn't brilliant, naturally intelligent and driven, but it does explain why she doesn't want to give power to men. She wants to keep the power in her later years because she had to date men to attain it and maybe gave up so much of herself along the way that she gets to an older age and she's like, oh, hell no, I'm going to be like the men that I was around coming up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'm going to have all the money and the power and I'll be like the sugar (laughs) to someone else. To be fair, her current boyfriend is from a very, very wealthy family. So it's not like she picked up some guy that wasn't loaded. I mean, the family that he's from is ridiculous. So she's still dating men that are wealthy in the way that she always did. But she does have her own money and power, and she's obviously not in any rush to give it up. But she cheated. She cheated, 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 and broke Robert Kardashian's heart. So imagine how Courtney, as an adult woman has processed this in a relationship with Scott Disick in a relationship now with Travis Barker. And it starts to make a little more sense 
some of the dynamics that we're seeing kind of bullshit play out on the Kardashians. Now, I also have heard that Khloe Kardashian, although super young, and Kim Kardashian also cried and cried and cried over the mom leaving Robert Kardashian. And I'm just trying to imagine Chris Kardashian destroying her family and the kids' emotions towards the father over her having an affair, being so selfish. And from what I understand from an article that came out, because when Chris wrote her book originally and she alluded to the affair, but didn't go into some of the detail that emerged later from the Cranes, she had talked about this affair. And I think she downplayed it, sort of, I would say, had to own it because they were becoming so famous that she sort of had to say, like, this is all my dirty laundry, but like control the narrative of it so it wouldn't get out of control. And she could say, oh, I talked about that. I don't want to revisit that again or whatever it was. Well, when she did this, back in, I think it was like 2011 or 2012, you know, they were a very different brand back then, the Kardashians. So an article breaks in Daily Mail in January of 2012, triggered by the fact that Kris Jenner chooses to talk about an imaginary affair she has with a man named Ryan, who is actually Todd Waterman. And Daily Mail interviews Todd Waterman, and he spills a lot of the tea that Chris was trying to control the narrative on, and it's pretty shocking stuff, considering this is one of the most admired families in America, I guess, because of their fame and fortune and inspirational lifestyle. Just saying. So let me read you some of this article. Now, keep in mind, as way of background, he's 23 years old when he meets Chris Kardashian. He's a soccer player. He's not making any money. He's working for the LA Heat. And he's hanging out with a bunch of celebrities like Rod Stewart that are playing soccer and he's getting popular because the locals like him and, you know, he's hot. So he gets invited to parties, you know, Beverly Hills is. So the way the story goes is Robert Kardashian lets Chris go out. She's now a socialite. She's had his children. She's spending his ridiculous amounts of money and she's got clout because of him. Not because he's famous, because he doesn't get famous until 1994, but he is very rich and affluential in the community. Now, I would imagine that Chris, being 22 years old when she marries Robert Kardashian, who's 12 years her senior at the time, is smitten by the fact that Robert is this young 30-something, very powerful guy and they have this really elaborate, lavish 1978 ceremony and she's instantly in the fast lane as a socialite in Beverly Hills and everyone loves her and she's so much fun and da, 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 da. And they're together for, I guess, 13 years or 12 or 13 years. What happens is she gets, I guess, tired of Robert and she's given up a lot of her young years to having the kids and I guess having fun, but not really that much fun because she's taking care of all the children and Robert's probably working a lot to be able to sustain the lifestyle. And so she starts to get an eye for this guy named Todd Waterman. She meets him with a bunch of friends. So the friends introduce her to him, probably pretty intentionally because he said he saw a photo of her at someone's house and said, I'd like to meet her. And then they kind of set it up, which just tells you how kind of gross Beverly Hills can be that people would be like, oh, let me introduce a mother of four to a young soccer player for her to have an affair with. Now, when she finally meets him, She's in her early 30s and he's in his early 20s. So now the role has switched. Chris has become Robert Kardashian, right? And the soccer player guy has become Chris. Chris Kardashian starts dating Robert Kardashian when she's 17 and he's in his early 30s. So you can see where she's kind of taught that this is okay by Robert, to be fair. But this is what causes the demise of Kris Jenner's marriage to Robert Kardashian and the destruction of the family uh, unit. So Todd spilled the tea and said the first time that they went out, they had sex in a closet. 
at a friend's house. Not so classy, but there you have it. Then she started to go out with him pretty regularly as if it was like a boyfriend figure. She's also paying for this guy. So she's using Robert Kardashian or let's just say the family money, not, I, I shouldn't say that's her money too, but she's using the family money to afford her affair. And she gets a Studio City apartment for them to have like a love nest and that's where he lives. And she describes it in the book as like a dumpy apartment, but Todd's like, hey lady, relax because you're the one who picked it out and pretty much paid for it. Because I had no money, really. That was sort of an interesting spin on things. Todd went on to talk about some pretty disrespectful behavior. He was invited to play tennis at the Kardashians' home, and he was already sleeping with Chris Kardashian, and he would play tennis for their entertainment, including Robert and he's sleeping with his wife. Robert did seem to sense things, Todd said. He thought that he tried to distract him a few times while he was playing so he'd lose the match at whoever they had him playing against because he was an excellent tennis player too, Todd. He was like a great all-around athlete. Uh, but again, you know, these are like hot pets because that's how Beverly Hills people treat poor people that come and enjoy their money. They treat them like things versus people. So he was basically like a pet for the Kardashians and Chris was the beneficiary of this pet. And Robert, I think, was willing to put up for with it a little bit. But when it started to get like along and this disrespectful, it really irritated him. Todd said they didn't go as far as sleeping in the bedroom, in the marital bedroom, but he did say they had sex in the Kardashian family home. I mean, it's just really nasty, right? I mean, can you imagine you're a Kardashian kid and you find this out about your mom? She's your manager and you're like wanting to respect her and all that. I mean, it's a lot. Robert really believed it was happening, but couldn't prove it. Then he finally hired a private detective and they did get caught at a restaurant in Beverly Hills together. Robert also caught them going somewhere together. And Todd said he took out a golf club and hit his car. I mean, so this is not like Robert's like looking the other way kind of thing. Robert just can't get his hands on real evidence to destroy the marriage over. And then it starts to unravel at the end because they get really sloppy with their their outings and such. But this was the most interesting thing in the whole Daily Mail article pertaining this affair. And this is sort of what I'm building up to. Because in the Patreon, we've studied Anthony Pelicano in length and what so many celebrities hired him to do, and some of it very questionable and, and very, you know, borderline, right? Almost criminal mafiosa type stuff. As a sidebar, he does get indicted on some things he does, mainly recording phone calls of people to use uh, for blackmail and extortion and to get people to settle that were coming for celebrities that celebrities had done bad things to. That's the cliff note. So now I'm going to quote from this article. Robert filed for divorce, and in the book, Chris describes breaking the news to the children and how they cried and cried. This is Chris Jenner's book, because we're going to be talking about a few different sources for this show. I'm using. And then it goes on. At the time, Todd says he was scared for his life and thought Robert might have him wiped out, in quotes. <laughs> huh? As he was a powerful man. He remembers O.J. Simpson calling him and warning him to stay away from Chris, something the reality show Matriarch also wrote about in her book. Does anybody else feel like that's really sus statement to make considering the fact that O.J. Simpson had his wife either killed by him or someone else or I mean, it seems to be related to O.J. Simpson. So like, does this not at all, I mean, for me, I, I took pause for a moment that this seems to be a thing that's okay in this group. Now, what grounds do I say this on? Because, of course, you guys are already thinking that a jury acquitted Simpson on October 3rd, 1995. But I'm basing my statement on a separate civil trial decision in 1997 where he was found liable for the deaths of his ex-wife and Goldman and was ordered to pay $33.5 million in damages to the families. I feel like this would be a good time to mention that in 1974, Robert Kardashian's brother, Tom Kardashian, 
is indicted with multiple other people in a huge bribery scandal to do with meat graders. And what was happening was the family, the Kardashian family, had a lot of money besides each Kardashian's individual job, like in Robert's case, being a lawyer. Well, his brother, Tom, was working as the general manager of the Great Western Packing Company, which was a meat packing company in Vern, which is like a dumpy area that at one time, anyway, probably not now, but at that time in the 70s, it was a dumpy area where there was a lot of industrial businesses. And that is how the Kardashian family as a whole made their money and allowed, for example, Robert to go off and get his law degree and all these wonderful things. Uh, So Tom had gone into the family business and I guess there was a huge scam that was happening in the meatpacking companies back in the 1970s, which was they were bribing meat graders to approve meat and also say the meat was higher than it really was. And sometimes even in extreme cases, if the meat had become toxified by a tapeworm or something else, they were still allowing the meat to be distributed out to the grocery stores so that consumers could ingest the meat. And This was a a two-way street, so I want to be fair. The meatpacking company managers were kind of held at gunpoint in a sense by the meat graders that they better play ball like all the other meat companies or they were going to have problems with getting their meat approved and out to the grocery stores where they made all their money, right? And at the same time, the meat packers also benefited from this deal because if they had meat that they normally would have to throw out or wasn't high enough grade, they could inflate the cost of the meat that they were asking for from the grocery stores by saying the meat was a higher quality than it really was. So it really benefited both people. But a bunch of people get indicted in 1974, and this becomes a Kardashian dirty little secret that Uncle Tom is essentially a felon. Now, to be fair, he did a plea deal. He accepted responsibility. He didn't have to go to jail. So the prosecutors, when they looked at it, probably realized that this was something that he was also intimidated into doing as much as participating and benefiting from. And later, he's pardoned by a president, which might explain explain why the Kardashians have such loyalty to their politics. But I wanted to bring it up because it talks about the climate that is kind of mafiosa surrounding the Kardashian family and their thinking, which Chris may have learned from being in that environment for so long as a young woman. Okay, so now that I've explained that, let's go back to Chris Kardashian's love interest that she's cheating on Robert with. Todd recalled, OJ said he wanted to talk and invite me to the house to talk. I said, quote, no, thank you. I said, if you want to talk, I have no problem meeting you in a public place, but I have no desire to go to your home. Like, in other words, I'm afraid that if I go to your home, I'll get beat up or killed. Todd says he started to look over his shoulder and felt threatened. I would walk into my place a different route using the back door. I'd just been caught by this man with his wife. He was a high-powered person. He's got friends, he says. It was scary. And then the article goes on, Todd's fears turned out to be unfounded, but looking back, he regrets the hurt the affair caused. Um, Unfounded or he just didn't step into any position that he could be hurt and killed or wiped out? (laughs) Right. But this is an odd theme to have in a friend group where a murder did occur with a wife that may have been cheating. I mean, in OJ's head anyway, right? Not really, because she was leaving him, supposedly a man who was an abuser. So he sees women, if he was, an object, a thing he possesses. So even if she's living in a different house and they're legally separated, he's still seeing her as his. And so she goes on a date with, let's say, a young, hot guy, which appears to be a theme also in this group, dating much younger people for fun. Then it would maybe trigger O.J. Simpson to do the type of thing he was threatening with Todd. I mean, you could definitely feel some sort of way about that case I just made. Another thing that was very strange in this article is Todd said that one of the open family jokes that he was privy to was 
whether or not Courtney really belonged to the family. Now, they didn't do it on the basis of the gossip that has been, you know, whispered for years, which is that Chloe's dad has got to be different because she looks so different from the rest of the family. And Chris has always said, no, 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 Robert Kardashian was her dad. Todd believes also Robert Kardashian was her dad. He's like, I'm not the father. I didn't even date Chris till five years after Chloe was born. But he said, the thing is, is that the family did joke about it because she looked different than the rest of the family. She was blonde haired, etc. And so he commented on that, thought you guys would want to know that. And then he said something else that was really strange, which is that Chris not only slept with him in the beginning of dating Bruce Jenner back when he was Bruce Jenner, but she also slept with him after she got married, Todd said, to Bruce Jenner. And then called it off because she felt bad. But then later, at another point in their marriage, after she's become very, very famous, she reaches out to him and he thinks it's to hook up. But she doesn't act on it this time. So maybe it's true. Maybe what she said to People Magazine that she regretted cheating on Robert Kardashian was true. Who knows? Famously, in an article in 2023... Hindsight is 2020, isn't it, Chris Jenner? Uh, she said he was such a great husband, talking about Robert Kardashian, and such a great dad. And I think that I fell into a situation where I thought that the grass was greener somewhere else. So that's why she cheated on, cheated with Todd. But the thing is, she didn't just cheat on Robert Kardashian, as I think she tried to make it sound. She cheated on Bruce Jenner, too. And Lord knows who else she cheated with. But did she regret cheating on Bruce Jenner? I wonder about that one. Bruce Jenner just spilled some tea yesterday, oddly, as I'm doing this. They started doing the PR around House of the Kardashian, which is a new Peacock docuseries, which, by the way, I haven't even watched doing this. I guess great minds think alike. I think like Peacock, because I just did this on my own because I got interested in it recently. But uh, Caitlyn Jenner, a.k.a. Bruce Jenner at the time, said in the series that he reached out to Robert Kardashian and said, I've, I'm going to take over most of Chris's finances and the like. And so just make this a clean divorce and make it easy on her because Robert was really, really uh, pissed. And uh, so anyway, that's what Jenner did to try to rectify the situation. Although I'd say he wasn't thrilled with his friend Jenner taking over Chris, but what was he going to do about it at this point? I suppose it was better than Todd ending up with her. But meanwhile, I just want to say, I'm sure they don't say this in the docuseries, she's cheating on Jenner with Todd during this period that Jenner's stepping up and trying to make her divorce clean with Robert. I wonder how she would feel about knowing that, Caitlin, if it's all true. Just throwing another wrench in this docuseries. Because you know what they say, once a cheater, always a cheater. And although she said that she became best friends with Robert Kardashian after they broke up, I questioned that a little bit. I'd say it took some time for Robert to get over this alleged completely broken heart from Kris Kardashian cheating that his friends said happened. Robert Kardashian had a really strange paranormal experience happen to him. He was, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but he was a elder in the born again Christian religion, which Chris was involved with too while she was with him. And at one point he was told by a Christian prophetess in his born again Christian religion that one day his name would be known around the world, the Kardashian name. And he thought that that prophecy was related to a moment in time in June 17th of 1994, where O.J. Simpson jumps in a Bronco because he's been alleged now officially to have done the murder of his wife, Nicole Simpson. He jumps in his Bronco with a friend of his, Al A.C. Kalings, and he grabs a gun from his house and he points it at his his head as he's driving down the road and the police pursue him and national cameras are following this crazy situation. I mean, it was literally televised all over the world. And Robert Kardashian steps in to help his friend OJ Simpson because they're actually friends socially and he's also a lawyer. And OJ Simpson's attorney, the main one was uh, Bob Shapiro. So the two Bobs, 
go and hold a, a press conference while this is all happening. And this is maybe planned. Maybe the Bronco event was actually planned by them. I mean, very risky move, but possible. What happens is Robert Kardashian goes and holds a press conference and he says, I have a letter that OJ Simpson left at my Encino home and I want to read it to the press while he's being pursued by the police in this huge media frenzy. And it says the letter, I have nothing to do with Nicole's murder. I loved her always and always will. Peace, love, OJ. So they all go, wow, wow. They're hanging on his every word because obviously this would be massive T. In the case, what did OJ Simpson say about these murders? Is it guilt? Is it innocence? Da, 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 da. And as Robert's leaving, they ask who he is. And he says, I'm Robert Kardashian and spells it out to the press. And I'm a friend of OJ Simpson's. And everybody goes crazy and starts saying, you know, his lawyer, his friend, the letter, and instantly the Kardashian names everywhere. But you have to wonder if, yes, Robert Kardashian thought that this prophecy was about his name in terms of that moment. But what if actually that was a paranormal prophecy about the future of the Kardashian names with the next generation, Kim, Courtney, and Khloe Kardashian? and Chris kind of on their coattails, right? And that was really what the known around the world prophecy was about. But he believed while he was alive, it was about him. He died very young, by the way. He died at 59 years old from esophagus cancer. And he was diagnosed or announced his diagnosis very late maybe and died only two months later. So very tragic for the girls, I would say, to also lose him in that way. Now, I want to remind you guys that Kris Jenner said she would just had such a good relationship with Rod, Robert before he passed, right? Well, Robert was briefly married to a woman named Jan, and they ended up, they were living across the street from each other in Beverly Hills. She had been married to a big guy in the entertainment industry, and she was part of the whole social circuit, but she was also really hot. And she lived across the street from Robert, and he got smitten by her looks, and they dated not very long, a few months, and then he asked her to marry him, and they went off to Vail uh, and did this marriage together. And he invited the kids to come on the trip with him and, you know, bond with his new wife, et cetera. And something happened and they literally annulled the marriage like 30 days later and nobody knew what happened. It was like a big secret. There was like a settlement and it was all like nobody talked. Then suddenly Jan in 2014 came out and gave a statement about the ending of their marriage. And what she said was this, did the kids have anything to do with it? Of course they did. He was upset all the time with his kids and his ex-wife. I don't think he could handle them. Uh Uh-huh. So there's another version of the truth. Jam went on with further information. She said that Robert was struggling to keep up with the demands for money from the kids and Kris Kardashian. And Robert even when he was with her, was always talking about Kris Jenner's cheating and would constantly talk about it to her and the pain that Kris caused him and that he was still so sad about the end of the marriage due to Kris Kardashian cheating on him. So that interview happens with Jan Ashley back in 2014, but she gives another interview in 2012 and she says this about Khloe Kardashian, quote, he said, well, you know that Khloe's not really a Kardashian, don't you? That's what Robert allegedly said about Khloe. Now, it's possible that he was just joking around because remember, that was supposedly a family joke that was open that Chris, you know, used to do with Todd and ha ha ha, because she's so different. But then also, I guess maybe Robert was joking with Jan and she took it seriously. She didn't understand the joke. It was like a weird joke, right? Like, why are you saying that? That's a possibility, right? Or it could be that Robert, after Kris Jenner was caught cheating in such a blatant way on him, made him wonder if maybe she hadn't cheated on him before with somebody else, while in their relationship, like maybe in earlier years of their relationship, not just at the end, and maybe started to question that joke 
took a different twist in his mind. Like, hey, wait a minute. She cheated so blatantly with my friends in my house, all this stuff with this guy. You know, what's to say she didn't cheat six years ago? And maybe we're always joking how uh, Chloe doesn't look like Kardashian. Well, maybe there's something to that. So the joke takes a dark turn, right? Not healthy to joke about things like that, honestly. It was one of her last interviews she ever gave because she dies about a year later and she's buried in Hollywood. Now here's the plot twist. Okay, get ready. Robert Kardashian marries a third wife in 2003. Her name is Ellen Pearson. I think they were friends. I don't know if they also were deeper than that, but they definitely were friends. And he found out that he was sick and it became public news eight weeks out from his death. He marries her six weeks before he dies. So he knows he's dying when he marries her, in other words. Now, there's two theories on this. The Kardashians theory, which the family believes, is that Ellen was dating Robert. And when he became very sick and not in his right mind, she convinced Robert to sign a will and that gave her everything. Or she faked his signature and said he did it. And so the will was changed by this new wife that came in the frame, you know, right before he dies, right? So the Kardashians are like, this woman wanted his money and saw a sick man and took advantage of it. And then Ellen's position is that, no, that's not what happened. We'd been We've known each other from a long time ago and we reconnected and we really had feelings for each other and we just decided to get married, you know, at that moment because he wanted probably, I, I, she doesn't say this, but protect the assets, right? Make sure the assets go to her and also keep Chris from changing what he wanted to have happen, you know, whether he was in his right mind or not, whatever it was at that time. And so by marrying her, it like guarantees that she's going to be able to control things, as the beneficiary of his wealth. And then he, she can determine what to give the kids, this and that. And the kids basically at the end of it all only got a few things and Robert got his college fund for USC. But she was very angry with the Kardashians and she said that Robert was not as amicable with Chris as she would like to make it sound. And also she seemed to drop allegations that Robert didn't think that Chloe was his daughter either, which was really weird. Another person saying that the dad said that. Now, you know, maybe she was just disgruntled and that was a way to hurt the Kardashians, who knows. But she drops a piece of his diary in 2013, I think it is, to In Touch magazine, and she sells it to them. And they publish it and it's all these really awful things about Chris Kardashian. And they sue her for selling copyrighted information. Again, a Marty Singer play, right? Everybody has Marty Singer. By the way, you know who reps Lisa Vanderpump and Ken Todd? Marty Singer. Okay, so I had to find this In Touch article, which is not easy, by the way. I don't know. It's kind of buried. In Touch, exclusive inside Robert Kardashian's diaries, photos of the actual pages, January 24th, 2013. As In Touch reported Wednesday, the magazine on newsstands now has exclusively obtained the late Robert Kardashian's handwritten diaries from his widow, Ellen Kardashian, spanning the years of 1989 and 1990. Now In Touch can reveal exclusive photos inside the actual pages from Robert's heartbreaking account of Kim Courtney and Chloe's childhood with mom, Chris Jenner. The excerpts pictured above show Robert reeling about Chris's alleged affair with soccer player Todd Waterman. Todd drove up to the back gate and parked. He went in the house and slept in my bed. So he did go in the marital bed. That was bullshit. Todd just didn't want to say it. Chloe and Robert were in the house, he writes on December 15th, 1989. So she has her lover come over, have sex allegedly in the marital bed, and the kids are downstairs, Chloe and Robert, right? Now you're starting to get a real picture as to why these people can't get into proper loving relationships. 
right? Thank you, mommy manager. When Todd wasn't at the Kardashian household, Chris spent nights and even holidays away from her family. She doesn't care, Robert wrote on the same day. She left the kids and I screwed all night. 10 days later, his entry was followed by a Christmas Day log. Quote, I was home alone with four kids, Robert writes about Christmas 1989. I put them to bed and played with them. Wow. Skipping Christmas, Chris. That's a new low as a mom. As Chris and Robert's marriage came to an end, the turmoil was taking its toll. The girls all resented their mother after Chris and Robert broke up. A Kardashian insider reveals to In Touch they knew that so much of the problems were Chris's fault. Only years later did Chris stop partying so much and start focusing more on her family. After nearly six years of dating, Robert and Ellen Kardashian wed in 2003, two months before he died, and his journals stayed tucked away in a box in Ellen's Southern California home for years. There was a lot of friction between the girls and their mother, Ellen tells in touch of Kris Jenner. Although a spokesperson for Kris claims, quote, we have no knowledge of these diaries existing and these accusations are ridiculous and are not true, Ellen verifies the authenticity of these excerpts, telling in touch, quote, these are authentic handwritten journals I have shared that my late husband, Robert Kardashian, so carefully wrote during 1989 and 1990 at a most trying and touching time of his life. They are my personal possession and left them to me on his passing. Ooh, maybe that's why he wanted to have her in control. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Maybe he had records that told the real story about his wife and mothering and what she did to him and the family at the end and wanted them to be released slowly by his wife. And then the Kardashians sued her so badly that they put her right back in her box because she, she never released any more after this because they sued her so much. I'm speculating, but whoa, wowzers, wow. So another story that isn't widely discussed is the way that Kris Kardashian gets busted. It actually was very embarrassing because Robert Kardashian found out from his friend Joyce and Larry Cranes because Larry had walked down in the gym and caught Kris Kardashian having sex with Todd. And then he was like, you have to tell Robert or I am. And that's how Robert Kardashian found out about the affair besides, I'm sure, the private investigator. Now, Kris Kardashian's mom had been cheated on by all the men that she ever married, and her first husband, who was Kris Kardashian's dad, cheated on her and also was an alcoholic and left Kris Kardashian when she was very young. Now, Kris Kardashian never went to college, and most of the Kardashian kids didn't do a traditional college education. Chloe didn't go at all. Kim went, dropped out, then did some sort of weird legal program. Rob did go to the Marshall School of Business, but did not go on to law school as was originally intended. And Courtney went to Arizona, which was like a party school. Now, Chris Kardashian has a younger sister named Karen, and Karen actually in high school was better looking than Chris Kardashian, not in her later life, but she obviously doesn't have the money Chris does for all the tweaks and stuff that you can do when you have a lot of dough. Uh, Karen went on to not really have an extraordinary existence. She had drinking and drug abuse problems, and she was also a part-time nurse. She was a single mom to a daughter named Natalie Zettel, but we don't hear really much about either of them. And the girls call her Crazy Auntie Kay. For a long time, Chris was estranged from her because she felt that she couldn't trust her because she had become so famous in the Kardashians and she became alienated from her sister Karen at that point. But I'm sure MJ tried to act the bridge because it's still both her daughters. You know, MJ raised the two girls together and there was no consistent man in Chris and Karen's life. There was just a lot of men that came in and out and they were all abusive to MJ. So it explains why Chris and Karen, you know, struggle with probably a lot of demons to themselves. And to be fair, Chris did try to buy Karen presents and be a good sister when she came into money to her. But I think it's just tough when you're that famous. 
So now I need to take you back into time to tell you a little bit more about Kris Jenner Kardashian's origin story. So Kris Kardashian was, by her friend's account, a girly girl with a clean room. She wasn't into hippie stuff. She didn't have rock stars all over her wall. She just kept everything really neat and tidy. She was high fashion. She was presenting herself in a way for, I think, a life she was trying to get, which is this sort of elitist life. Like she pretended that she was maybe from a different sort of family. Her grandmother ended up being a huge inspiration for her. She was a businesswoman. She had a candle shop. She mentored a lot of the kids that were in Kris Jenner's class when they were young and needing jobs and she spent a lot of time with Chris, almost more than MJ, because MJ didn't seem that present. She was strict with Chris in her rules, but she wasn't really around when Chris would have friends over and stuff like that. Chris ends up going to Claremont High School, which is the school that they actually based Fast Times at Ridgemont High on. If you guys are my age, you will remember that movie well. It was like a kind of an LA story of a public high school, kids getting into trouble, different cliques. It didn't have the big message that Breakfast Club had. It was more just like watching kids trying to figure things out and make mistakes. Her friends from high school remember Chris as being non-confrontational. If she felt like someone was going to fight with her or was unhappy with her, she would disappear and not face the person. She also didn't really get into trouble much. She was very disciplined and she didn't let herself get out of control, at least at that time. Kris Kardashian in her book talked about how she got this big, beautiful red Mazda car on her 16th birthday and she got good grades and she was kind of making it seem like everything was perfect in that way. And her friends from high school didn't recall her getting such a fancy car. They did say they remembered her getting a car at 16, which was a big deal, but not at the level of car that Chris said in her book. And they also said that they remembered her as kind of good in school, not necessarily excellent in school, which is, I guess, the way it came off in her memoir. Now, her grandmother, although a great inspiration to her, also had terrible men that were alcoholics and abusive too. So there's just like a line of really kind of bad men you know, they had their ups and their downs, but they were generally overall not great. And Chris Kardashian gets it in her head that she's going to land herself a Prince Charming. She's going to get a rich man who treats her great. And she starts focusing her attention on that goal. And we all know that Chris Kardashian doesn't fail a lot when she sets her eyes on something. And now we're getting big Kathy vibes from MJ because allegedly MJ was really trying to introduce Chris to some rich men or to point her in the direction of where to find them, like maybe go hang out in Beverly Hills or go to these fancy restaurants or whatever, just trying to get her daughter married off well. So it's obviously a theme. I mean, you know, it can't be that every mom is a pimp. It's obviously something to do with the time frame because Big Kathy was doing the same thing. Joan Zimmerman Chris Kardashian's friend really felt that her mom had set her sights on getting her in the right circles, let's just say. Now, this is really good information. It turns out that Chris Jenner, Kardashian, whatever, she, when she starts hanging around in LA, she really gravitates to Kathy Hilton. And Kathy Hilton, influenced by Big Kathy, is kind of doing the same type of thing that Chris is trying to do, which is land a really wealthy man or a good family name, all this stuff. And so, you know, their alliance happens early on and they have very similar ideas on how things should go down. So it's it's no surprise that Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian start to hang out and help each other. And Kim follows in Paris Hilton's lead with the sex tape. And Chris knows already how to handle it from watching Kathy Hilton. Hilton and watching Paris Hilton. It wasn't like this was all happening and they were sort of distant to it. They were really good friends with the Hiltons. And it was a, a friendship that went way, way back to Chris's early 20s. 
So when people were surprised that Lisa Renna promoted the Kardashians tequila brand on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 11 seemingly for free, and Kathy Hilton got upset that Lisa Renna did that and stopped promoting her tequila or put a competitor to her tequila out there instead of helping the Hilton family tequila. Everybody expected that Chris would back Lisa Renna up over Kathy Hilton because Lisa did this huge thing for the Kardashian family. But that's not what happened. Chris Kardashian actually did all these public displays of affection to Kathy Hilton and showed that she loved Kathy Hilton. And at this time, Lisa Renna had turned on Kathy Hilton. And instead of Kris Kardashian playing in the middle and saying, okay, Lisa, I love you for promoting my Kardashian tequila. Um, and I love you too, Kathy, because we came up together and, you know, she actually kind of blocked Lisa Renna entirely to show that her loyalty completely lied with Kathy Hilton, which was a real diss to Lisa Renna, who was, you know, helping the Kardashian brand. But this goes to show the depth that Chris and Kathy's relationship really is. Because generally, the Kardashians are going to reward people that promote their brands for free on big, big shows, right? Like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But in this case, the loyalty to Kathy was so important to Chris, she didn't do it. And that really surprised a lot of the fans. But now we know why. So Kris Kardashian's mom takes her to golf tournaments and tennis and polo and anything that she can think of to get Kris in front of some wealthy men. And she also dresses her the part. She makes sure that, well, Kris did it too, but she made sure that she dressed a little bit older and she didn't waste her time with high school boys that didn't have anything really to offer her. So Kris was pretty checked out of high school before she even graduated. So Kris Kardashian's big score, the first one she gets, is at the age of 17 in Hawaii. She meets a a pro golfer named Cesar Sanudo, and they start to date. And this is like 1973 time frame. So Cesar was really impressed by her. He was about 10 years older than her, like 27 or something. And allegedly, Kris had lied to him and said that she was 18, but she was really younger than that. So anyway, not a big deal. That happens a lot in your teens, but he felt a little bit dismayed over that because he didn't know that she was, you know, not 18, let's say when they started getting really serious. She actually is with him for a while and has a beautiful life with him, but then she cheats on him and leaves him devastated. Sound familiar? Well, Chris plays this guy hard. Uh, He gets a condo with some of his winnings in the golf tournaments because he's in the open and all this stuff. And he buys like a condo and Chris convinces him to let her move in with one of her influential friends. And there isn't any threesome action from what, you know, friends of Chris from that time say, but uh, they were really shocked at how she was able to finagle herself into this guy's house totally and live there when he wasn't even home. He was out on golf tours and he took her on extravagant trips on the road with him when he went to all the different golf events. And I mean, she just was living the dream. And when he wasn't there, some of her friends said that she had a phone line in the condo that was her phone and she would use it to call and have people come over for parties. And then men would come over and she'd hit on them, even though she was in Cesar, the pro golfer's house. And he was like doing her a favor by letting her live there for free. (laughs) It's so crazy. Now, she did not work during this period. She used this guy's resources to continue working a few jobs on her own and saving money to allow her to probably reinvest in her appearance and everything else that she wanted to do to go to the next level of rich guy, which seems like, honestly, her MO as a young woman. Now, Kris Jenner's dad, who is an alcoholic and a verbally abusive, not physically abusive to people. He comes in and out of her life when it works for him. He does try to get close to her when she's a teenage girl and he is around and she really enjoys being around him. He's fun. He's funny. I'm sure she felt upset that he left her when she was very young, but obviously you get over things as you get older. 
And I don't know, they were on their way, I guess, to maybe mending things a little bit more. And then suddenly he just, he gets married to a new woman and they're driving back from Mexico and they're just about to be in San Vicente. And he had stopped and had a drink, a margarita or two on the way home and essentially got too drunk. He was driving a Porsche and he hit a truck and the truck driver was killed. He was killed a few to days or weeks after the crash and his wife, his new wife, was left in critical condition but survived. He died at the young age of 42 years old. Chris said she was completely rocked by it. She dropped the phone, hysterically cried, but she actually never checked on the wife. (laughs) Just pretended the wife didn't exist that was in critical condition, which seems to be a pattern with the Kardashians. They use you or take something from you. And then when they can't use you or take something from you anymore, they just blank you. Uh, It's happened with people they've had disputes with in litigation. And it happens with several family members that have come into contact with Robert Kardashian. It were, it happened with Chris's dad. I mean, it's kind of happened a little bit with Bruce Jenner as Caitlyn Jenner, but we can't blame her for that because that was horrific what she went through in terms of losing her husband in that way. So I just think yeah, it's, it's a pattern. So after her dad's passing, Cesar, the golf pro, actually gets on one knee and asks Chris Kardashian to marry him, and she's only 19 years old. So Chris Kardashian says yes but she really isn't sure she wants to marry him because she's already met another gentleman by the name of Robert Kardashian, who is somebody she met and realizes has got a lot going for him, a lot more than a golf pro at the Del Mar racetrack. And so this is where she falls for Robert, and she actually cheats on Cesar with Robert Kardashian. So Robert Kardashian talks up... Chris Kardashian at the racetrack, and she learns pretty quickly that he's from the Kardashian meat distribution family. They provided meat to all the grocery stores that were big at that time, Safeway and Ralph's and all of that. And she ends up going, okay, he lives in Beverly Hills. He's, you know, shopping in Beverly Hills. His clothes are really nice. He's dressed to the nines. And she starts to realize he's also an attorney. And she's like, oh my gosh, this guy is like, check, check, and check because he comes from an influential family. He has a high paying, respectable job. And he's already starting off at like 30 with a house in Beverly Hills. In the circuit, it's like a dream come true for her. Kris Kardashian apparently lied in her memoir about the phone number exchange with Robert Kardashian. A person who was involved with it later said, Robert and I found out that she was going to the Riviera Country Club to watch her boyfriend, Cesar, do a golf tournament and... I pretended to be a date of Robert Kardashian and I asked her for her phone number and she gave it to me like we could all hook up or whatever. But then Robert called her and said basically like that was a front and he just really wanted to get to know her. And then he wooed her really hard to try to steal her away from Cesar, the golf pro. Now, another person said that that wasn't an accurate story either. And so maybe people have it kind of confused on the timeline. But another gentleman said, no, Robert Kardashian told me that he saw Chris Kardashian on a flight and he met her on an airplane. She was a flight attendant and he was flirting with her and he picked her up there. And that's how they actually got to know each other, not through this other method. So we just don't know. And the story from that person was that she was really into him and really wanted to land him versus the other way around. So it's like (laughs) everybody's got their own story here. Now, the Kardashians' daughters said that the way that their mom and dad met was Chris was 17 and she was a flight attendant and they fell in love together. So that was how they said it went down. So one of the things that really attracted Chris Kardashian to Robert Kardashian was she found out that him and his older brother, Tom, had bought a house in 90210 Beverly Hills. And although it wasn't a super fancy one, it was very, very nice. It had a tennis court and a pool, and the brothers had 
gone into the investment together and had hired an interior designer to do it nicely. And so he was young with quite a large asset that was impressive to her. And he wanted to have lots of kids and she wanted to be a wife. So he was looking more and more like a solid candidate for her. And she liked the idea of moving uh, into Los Angeles, into the Beverly Hills area. Now, Chris Kardashian wrote in her book that Robert Kardashian was so in love with her that when she turned him away a few times, he cried to her on the phone over it. And all of Robert Kardashian's friends was like, if Robert was alive today, he would sue the shit out of Chris Kardashian for writing such bullshit. Now, Cesar and Chris Kardashian don't ever have an official breakup. What happens is Cesar gets home from one of his golf tournaments to his condo and expects to see Chris waiting for him. But when he gets home, she is either heavily fooling around with Robert Kardashian in his bed or in his house, or they may have even been having sex. There's different renditions of the story. Cesar, of course, the golf pro, goes into a crazy rage and throws Robert Kardashian and Kris Kardashian out of the house. And this really is what starts the relationship between Kris Kardashian and Robert Kardashian. And Cesar called a lot of his golf friends that night, like in a rage. And he was like, she's a whore. She's just like a gold digging whore. And that's what he was saying. He also said some really nasty things about Robert, obviously. But the big thing that came across to me was that in his mind, Chris went directly into the whore box. So I just wanted to say that to you. By the way, she's only 19 at this time. Now, his brother was so angry at Chris Kardashian, the family referred to Chris as a snake. And that was like the snake was how they called Chris. Now, Chris later in her book changed the story around and actually made Cesar's story of what she did to him, her story, which really rubbed salt in the wound of Cesar's family and friends because he had passed away. So she waited to write the book after Robert and Cesar had passed away so she could tell the narrative any way she wanted. And she literally stole some of the stories that she did to people and reverted them like they happened to her. Believe it or not. Is that scandalous or what? Now, this is a really important story I'm about to tell you because it does validate some of the crazy claims of theft around the Kardashians that we've heard through the years, some of which have been around Ray J and Brandy, his sister, Britney Spears. I mean, I could go on and on. And of course, so much IP that they've stolen. Well, guess what? Cesar always believed and told his family that after Kris Kardashian left him, he went through his apartment looking for this clutch of gold bullion coins that had been gifted to him by one of his very wealthy sponsors throughout the years. He would give him gold coins as like a gesture. You know, like you might buy a, a $10,000 watch for the person who, you know, you're paying to, to, to be the sport person representing your brand or something. So he had all these gold coins and he went to look for them six weeks after the breakup and he couldn't find them anywhere. And he was so upset because they were both sentimental and worth a lot of money. And he said, I know that bitch took them. And his fear seemed to be confirmed because he ran into Chris's mother and she had a gold bracelet on that appeared to have a few of his coins added to the bracelet. And he was like, those are from my collection, I think. And obviously it was really strange to him that she had a gold bullion bracelet, very similar to the type of coins he had been given. So he truly believed that Chris took the coins, probably used some of them to, I guess, restart her lifestyle after the fact. And then 
went rushing into Robert Kardashian's arms where he started paying for and maybe gifted her mom some of the coins as a present because her mom was kind of like Big Kathy and she was sort of in on the idea of Kris Kardashian becoming this wealthy wife, a trophy wife. But think about it. If she was already doing that kind of unethical stuff, like we've caught her now cheating, really cheating, not even like respectfully cheating. And it's a pattern that she does. We we know on and on and on to every man she's with. Now we find out that she likely stole something so important to this man, this man who did nothing to her to take his like sentimental gold coins and use it to restart her life when she cheated on him. I mean, what does that say about the chip in her head to do with ethics? So I'm now believing that we have a big, strong basis that Kris Kardashian is capable of anything and will hurt anyone to get what she wants. That is, of course, if the story is true, because Cesar is dead and this came from family members and friends, and it's possible that he made it up or exaggerated it. So I don't know. But I am saying that if you take these stories that have been written in these different books from different interviews as the truth, then it's not looking good for Chris in terms of being maybe the nice person she portrays on television. Now, if you had asked me this before I did this research, I would never have believed that was true. I would have said, well, you know, she has been caught doing some bad things, but maybe she just wasn't educated or academic or, you know, she seems, you know, street smart, but she's not really that smart. You know, she's a hustler. It's different. But no, now I'm really starting to think she's got a weird chip going on. Now, Chris Kardashian from a flight attendant that went to school with her in flight school supposedly had been talking nonstop about wanting to marry Robert Kardashian. It was really her dream. She was only 21, but she saw that he could offer her the life that she dreamed of. But there was one thing in the way, and that was that he was also dating Priscilla Presley, and he was mad about Priscilla Presley, and there was a lot of clout surrounding her that Chris couldn't compete with. So Chris was always in a panic that she might lose Robert to Priscilla. And that was really the only thing between her and the cup, which would be to be Kardashian's wife. Now he felt that she was a little young, which is why besides the fact that he was obsessed with Priscilla's Elvis Presley's ex, blah, 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 and the scene dating her, he felt like maybe she was too young to really get serious. And that was kind of what he was looking to do at that point because he was in his early 30s. So this was the deal. Now, she confided in her flight attendant friend that you know she was really worried about this. And she did go out on many dates. She wasn't a slut, her friend said. She was always being pursued by men. She said it was like weird, like she could turn it on and every rich guy in the room would want Chris Kardashian. So, I mean, it wasn't like she didn't have power too. However, Robert had already had her, right? And he could have her anytime he wanted. And he was a big bachelor in Beverly Hills in his early 30s. So he wasn't sure that she was the one for him. And once he got her, he sort of was playing Priscilla and her off each other. Now, Kris Kardashian was not afraid of work. And when she was with Cesar, she was like, I need money. And Cesar was like, well, I can get you a job as a flight attendant. So that is where she becomes a flight attendant. And she starts working in first class because she's so beautiful on American Airlines. And that allows her to obviously network a lot, which she does do. Now, meanwhile, Robert Kardashian and Priscilla go out for about a year. They have a rocky relationship. And one of the comments Robert made to his friends was that Elvis Presley would call Priscilla in the middle of the night all drugged up and he would want to talk to her and she would be in bed with Robert and she would have to talk to him and she would leave the receiver on 
you know, the pillow and he would overhear their conversation so that he wouldn't get jealous. But he was like all drugged up and she'd have to like talk to him and coax him. And so Robert realized that Elvis was not really out of Priscilla's life. And they had a conversation towards the end of their relationship where she basically said, listen, I could love you to the end of the earth, but I'm never getting remarried till Elvis Presley is dead. And this was a really big moment for Robert because he was like, wow, you know, she really is still attached to him. And the reason was that he was very, very protective of his daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, and he didn't want anyone coming in between him and her. And Priscilla had made a lot of money in the divorce and she was still getting, you know, money from Elvis. At the end of his life, he runs out. And this was close to that time, but she had done well with, you know, investments and she had networked herself into the Beverly Hills socialite scene and she had done things really respectfully, properly to Elvis. So he took good care of her. And it seems that she just did not want to muddy that water until he was gone. And I think she felt like he was spiraling out of control. So how much longer could it last? Not in a diabolical way, but she just knew his health was declining. She couldn't get him help. He like wouldn't listen, you know, so she cared so much about him, but still there was nothing really to be done. Now, also Robert came to find out that Elvis had never been loyal to Priscilla on the road and none of the wives related to any of the band members that Elvis was with in his like little mafia team that he had around him were loyal to their wives and so the wives weren't allowed to go on tour very often. So Priscilla had been really put through it. And by the time she met Robert Kardashian, she kind of was like done with men controlling her and she still had to deal with Elvis. And Robert was really looking for a woman to step in a very traditional Armenian role. And so he saw that in Kris Kardashian as a possibility again, when things broke off with Priscilla. Now, if you guys watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which most of you do, you probably have seen Linda Thompson on the show a few times in season one and two. And she was friends with all of us. And we used to go out with her and I got to know Linda Thompson and she's really, she was a really fun girl. But Linda Thompson, so you guys know, was also with Elvis Presley. And she, in fact, was the one who found him dead on the toilet. And I want, I asked her so many times to come on the show, but so I'm still trying. Someday maybe she'll decide to do it. But Linda is like another kind of eight degrees of separation from everybody. So Linda goes on after Elvis and marries Bruce Jenner. And then she also marries David Foster, you know, Yolanda's husband from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So Linda has just, you know, really kind of been with everybody. And this was sort of the way it was. I guess that's why I'm bringing it up. It's just like everybody was very incestuous with each other. Uh, you know, Chris Kardashian, Got to know Linda Thompson because she marries Bruce Jenner and Chris marries Bruce Jenner. And there's just a lot of women kind of targeting the same type of guys, the same group of men. And this was a very popular clique, the Kardashian, his very, very rich friends, OJ Simpson, Jenner, all those guys knew each other. Well, at the time, Bruce Jenner was a guy. All right. Well, I think we've really done it. We have pretty much captured these early years of Kris Jenner getting out there, getting her men and all of the scandals surrounding it. The next part of her story is as interesting. And of course, I want to talk about the next generation a little bit in a part two. I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive. And again, I did not use the docuseries on Peacock. I used several books, including Chris 
book, Jerry Oppenheimer's book and some others. And I wish mashed the best of the stories together for this part one episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. I tried to tell it from a few different viewpoints because obviously there's many versions of the truth, but I thought that you would enjoy this kind of part of the Kris Jenner origin story especially in looking at some of the things that we're watching on TV with the Kardashians and keeping up the Kardashians and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and This is Paris and Paris and Love and just a lot of TV shows surrounding all this. So it seemed uh, a really fun one to do. I do want to say to you guys, please have a safe and super happy Thanksgiving. Lots to be grateful for. And remember that I am thinking about all of you and your wonderful minds that I have gotten to argue with and learn from and have my mind blown. I just want to say that I'm so grateful for all of you and the wonderful thoughts you've shared with me on the Patreon, on the all listening platforms, on YouTube, on my Instagram and my Twitter. I just love getting to know all of you. And I thank you so much for having your own thoughts and opinions. And I appreciate them and I stay open to all of them. And I want to wish you the most beautiful Thanksgiving with your family. And I will be in Disney with mine. My dad loves Disney. And, you know, so we're going to be going on all the rides with my son again. (laughs) I'm going to tell you. But big kiss. Be safe, have fun, treasure the little things and the big things. And if anything, another story just confirming what I've learned in my life, which is money can't buy you happiness, my friends. It sure does help, but it can't buy you happiness. 